Mr. Worker's Window by Carly Dawson Chapter 10, Part 2 One day Chris wandered alone to the dusty shop. This time had nearly come when he could walk about in early Georgetown and know that it would still be the Georgetown of the past, and not the one into which he had been born. This afternoon, a rainy one, he had tired of changing himself into and out of objects. Mr. Wicker was busy, and Becky Boozer had gone off to market accompanied by Ned Silling. Tris felt somewhat forlorn and lo lonely, as any boy might, and kicked an old piece of wood ahead of him into the darkness of the shop. Going up to the shop window, he stood with his hands thrust into his pockets, staring glumly first out of the, at the window, and then idly at the three objects he had once loved to contemplate, the Mirabelle and her bottle, the coil of heavy rope, and the carved wooden figure of the Nubian boy. Without interest at first, he was stared at the little negro boy, so gaily dressed in full red trousers, gilded jacket, and white turban. The figure's shoes, carved in some eastern style, had curved up pointing toes. Then, all at once, an idea, the idea came to Chris. If he was to be a magician, could he make the boy, this boy come to life? The prospect excited him wildly, for he had no companion with whom to laugh and share jokes. Grown people, however gay and kind, were never the, the same. The more he thought of it, the more Chris knew it had to be attempted. He squatted on his haunches, examining the wearing figure attentively, and felt convinced that once alive, the boy would be an ideal and happy companion. But how did one change inanimate to animate? Chris got up and stole back to Mr. Wicker's door. He heard the magician going up the spiral staircase to his room above, and after changing himself into a mouse to slip under the door and see that the room was really empty, Chris resumed his proper shape and opened the doors of the cupboard at the far end of the room. On its top shelf was Book Three, a book a foot thick and bound in heavy brass, studded with semi-precious stones and the forms of signs and symbols. With difficulty, standing on tiptoe, Chris lifted it down and, placing it on the floor, turned over page after page. The afternoon, rainy before, increased in storm. Dusk came two hours before its time. Thunder snarled in the sky. At last, Chris found it. There were the words, and there the charm. Certain elements were to be mixed and poured at the proper time. He hurried, memorizing as he closed the book and hoisted it once more to its high shelf. Looking about, he found the ingredients that had been listed, and in an empty vial poured first two drops of this, and then seventeen of that, and ran to heat it at the fire. Mr. Wicker began moving about upstairs. The floorboards creaked, and still Chris could not leave until the potion fumed and glowed. After what seemed an endless time amid a growing grind of thunder, and in the almost darkened room, the file in Chris's hand gave off an arching, rosy glow. Chris, his outlawed cheeks hot from excitement in the fire, tipped that out just as Mr. Wicker's step creaked on the topmost tread of the spiral stair. With infinite caution, Chris closed the door silently behind him and, running lightly forward, reached the figure of the Negro by. The words came out, interrupted by peals and cracks of thunder. <laughs> the shop was black, except for the paler crescent of the bow window giving onto the street. With a crash of thunder, <laughs> all but drowning out his words, a boy shouted in the emptiness of the shop as he poured the rosy liquid on the figure made of wood. And then, appalled at his audacity, Tris dropped the vial with splinter the other floor. <laughs> Watching them in the darkness, he shook with so with nerves that he had to kneel. For in the blackness lit only by the lightning and its own eerie glow, the wood was changing as he watched. It was as if the stiffness melted. Under his eyes, the wooden folds of cloth became rich silk. Embroidery gleamed in its reality upon the coat. And oh, the face! The wooden grin loosened. The large eyes turned. A hand holding the hard bouquet of carved flowers moved and let the bouquet fall. The feet of the boy twitched and shifted in their pointed shoes. A grin crispy and frozen as the boy moved suddenly, and a final <laughs> of thunder seemed to split the sky apart. Outside, the rain poured down as if over some skyward dam. The boy looked down at Gris with a radiant smile and put out his hand. I'll help you up, he said to the kneeling boy in front of him. I'm Amos. 
And as he turned, the light in the dark hands holding firm, the fire light was streaming from the distant door. Mr. Wicker waited. Mr. Wicker's Window by Carly Dawson, Chapter 10, Part 2.